the company of curlews. Chapter 12 King of the River The next afternoon, the public bar is quiet. The New Year's Eve give us a kiss mob won't be here for a few hours. Johnny Blackburn is there with his mate Bambi Phillips. They've worked together on the river for quite a few years now. You still got the flu, old man, Bambi says. Where'd you get that act, he laughs. I am sitting there in the public bar of the Eagle Inn, half a stout, a whiskey chaser, medicinal purposes, as they say. Sitting dressed in Owen Portie's fishing clothes, waxed white linseed trousers, a grandad shirt, a scarf, a blue cotton jacket, white hawthorn in the coat pocket, a candle in the top. Atop my head is his bowler hat with accompanying feathers. I heard you were going out last night, says Johnny. You know it's illegal. If they caught you casting a net, we're the ones who'd suffer. Time to leave the river to us, says Bambi. I'm sitting on a chair. Sixty-five years after I attacked Ralph Richards, scarred him for life. Not the same chair, mind. I was drinking in the snug with my uncle Di, I say, out of context. Who's he talking to, Bambi says. I'm talking to you, good boy, and you better listen. There are hard times to come on that river. You should leave the fish be, I say. Ah, it's all right for you to say that. You've had your time. It's our turn now, says John Blackbird. I don't know the answer, I say. But those super trawlers out there can't be helped, men. They're factories. They can land 60,000 tonnes of fish. I'm not saying they're the only problem, but let's do our bit, I tell him. I've been lucky to live as long as I have, and if I can pass one thing on to you boys, it is that we need to look after our fish. Ah, you're just a selfish old man, says Bambi, banging the table, who hates the fact that his days are over. Care for the river, man, I tell Bambi. Farmers' fields full of chemicals wash off. The river is a drain. There's no fish any more, says Bambi. Listen to me, boys. Yeah, come closer. I'll tell you a story. John Blackbird and Bambi are drawn towards me like moths to a lamp. I feel a power over them that makes them pull up a chair. Last night, under a mackerel sky of a full moon, I met a fish, a thirty-pounder. The birds of the river had told me to go out one more time. Ah, he hit the net with such a force, he nearly capsized the boat. I always thought, that I was the king of the river. This magnificent specimen, on his eighth journey back up the river to his spawning grounds, he was the king of the river. Through all my years of fishing, he'd been playing games with me. I thought I had him one night. Literally slipped through my fingers. A seal caught him on another night. The fish was mine, not the seal's. I shot that seal. The fish escaped. One night I, fallen asleep, and was too slow to gather in. The salmon escaped again. He told me there were others that had caught him. An angler who had him on the hook gave him too much slack. 
Bambi and John are looking at me strange now. Once he was caught and released, part of a scientific experiment, tagged with a transmitter. Big Brother been watching him. He told me. He told me of the losses he had suffered within his family, his brothers and sisters over the years. His body was battered, injured, wounded. He said he'd seen it all. The salmon told me. He's seen the ghosts and ghouls of the river all pointing towards his death. He was ready to die. That's what he told me. Did you know him well? asked John Blackbird, sniggering. I knew him well right enough. I knew him by his body. I knew his wounds. The seal had taken a bite out of a fin. The hook had scarred his jaw and ripped open the side of his head. I held him in my boat. I don't know where the strength came from, but I held him in my hands. I held him by his tail. Whoa, says Bambi. I couldn't do that. you got to be hellish strong to be able to do that. At last I had him. Yes, I picked up the knocker. I was going to give him his last rites. He told me he was ready to die. He'd had a good life. He knew he was getting slower and that his eyes were dimming. And as I raised the small lethal club of wood, I realised that I had to leave that salmon go. Go, my friend, I said to him. Go one last time to whence you came. Go spawn and make your babies. I put him back in the water and he thanked me. And you know, all that time there was a curlew watching me from the river bank. It was there, still judging me. <laughs> <laughs>